In thy appointed time, obtain the resurrection of the justified unto eternal life. Bless, O Lord, the whole race of mankind, and let the world be filled with the knowledge of thy Son, Jesus Christ. This is stuff we're not exposed to. We don't know. This is knowledge that's denied our children. It's knowledge that literally is denied us. It's out there if you go searching for it. How about John Adams, our second president, who, by the way, also served as a chairman of the American Bible Society. In an address to military leaders, he said, we have no government armed with a power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and true religion. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Our first Supreme Court Justice, John Jay, stated that when we select our national leaders, if we are to preserve our nation, we must select Christians. Providence, here's, here's the quote, Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers, and it is the duty as well as the privilege and interest of our Christian nation, Christian nation, Christian nation, Christian nation, by our second president, to select and prefer Christians for their rulers. His son, John Quincy Adams, was the sixth president of the United States. Coincidentally, he was also a chairman of the American Bible Society. And he considered that as his highest and most important role. Not president of the United States, but president of the Bible Society. On July 4th, 1821, he said the highest glory of the American Revolution was this. It connected in one indissoluble bond the principles of civil government with the principles of Christianity. Calvin Coolidge in the early 1900s, our 30th president, reaffirmed this truth when he wrote, the foundations of our society and our government rest so much on the teachings of the Bible that it would be difficult to support them if faith in these teachings would cease to be practically universal in our country. They are no longer practically universal in our country. Following his reasoning, it would be difficult to support the foundations of our society and our government. I leave you to decide. In 1782, the U.S. Congress voted this resolution. Listen carefully. The Congress of the United States recommends and approves the Holy Bible for use in all schools. William Holmes McGuffey author of the McGuffey Reader, who a lot of you may not be aware of, but was a well-used educational tool for about, 100, uh, for about 100 years. Over 125 million copies sold. President Lincoln called William McGuffey the schoolmaster of the nation. Here's what Mr. McGuffey says. The Christian religion is the religion of our country. From it are derived our notions on character of God, the great moral governor of the universe. On its doctrines are founded the, the peculiarities of our free institutions. From no source has the author drawn more conspicuously than from the sacred scriptures. From all these extracts from the Bible, I make no apology. Did you know of the first 108 universities founded in America, 106 were Christian, including the first, Harvard University, chartered in 1636. Rule number one, 
all students entering must know Greek and Latin in order that they can study the scripture. It said specifically, let every student be plainly instructed and earnestly pressed to consider well the main end of his life and studies is to know God and Jesus Christ, which is eternal life. And therefore, lay to Jesus Christ as the only foundation of all solid knowledge and learning. And seeing the Lord only giveth wisdom, let everyone seriously set himself by prayer in secret to seek it of him. From the Harvard University Handbook. For over 100 years, over 50% of the graduates from Harvard were pastors. It's clear that the Bible and Christian faith were fundamental in our educational and judicial system. However, in 1947, there was a radical change of direction by the Supreme Court. They outlawed a prayer. The prayer in question was, Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence on Thee. We beg Thy blessings upon us and our parents and our teachers and our country. Amen. That was outlawed. Then in 1963, the Supreme Court ruled that Bible reading was outlawed as unconstitutional in public schools. Here's the justification the court came up with. If portions of the New Testament were read without explanation, they could and have been psychologically harmful to children. Bible reading is now unconstitutional, though it was quoted by 94% of those who wrote our Constitution. <laughs> and shaped our nation and its system of education and justice and government. In 1965, the courts denied as unconstitutional the rights of a student to audibly pray over his food in the school cafeteria. In 1980, the Ten Commandments were outlawed in public schools. Here's what the Supreme Court said about that. If the posted copies of the Ten Commandments were to have any effect at all, it would be to induce children to read them. And if they read them, meditated upon them, and perhaps venerated and observed them, <clears throat> this is not a permissible objective. It's not permissible to think that our children might follow the moral precepts of the Ten Commandments. James Madison, one of the primary authors of the Constitution, said, We have staked the future of our nation, not upon the power of government, far from it. We have staked the future of all our political constitutions upon the capacity of each of ourselves to govern ourselves according to the moral principles of the Ten Commandments. Today, we ask God to bless America, but how can He bless a nation that has departed so far from Him? Most of what we've talked about so far today has been erased from our textbooks. The people in power do not want you to know and the Bible tells you why God's people perish. It's from lack of knowledge. Knowledge is power. Do not be deceived by those who would rewrite history. It's not the way God operates. God operates from the standpoint of truth. Here's an interesting letter. Dear God, why didn't you save the school children at Northern Illinois University, Virginia Tech, Amish Country, Pennsylvania, Columbia?